Hello friends, welcome to Auto DevOps. This is another video about Google Cloud Platform. Today we're going to talk about the org bootstrapping. So what is the org bootstrapping? When you create an account in Google Cloud, the only thing you have is an organization. No folders, no project, no resources. So it's completely empty. You only have this user that is super user, super admin in the organization and can create every single resource that you want. So the org bootstrapping is exactly the process of creating the foundations of your cloud environment. So I did this process a few times in uh, different companies and every single time starts with the meeting and at some point someone will say, oh, this is a chicken and egg problem. Well, th when that happens, my recommendation is find an excuse to leave the room because you're going to waste three hours of your life. So what is this chicken and egg problem I'm talking about? The chicken and egg problem is when someone tries to stick to principles and best practices too early in the process. And in order to be strict with these practices and principles, you will end up with over-engineering your solutions because you don't have an environment that can easily allow these principles. Let's start with an example. So let's assume that in the team, you all agreed that you want to do absolutely everything with infrastructure as cool. So you want to use something like Terraform. Okay, so the next question is going to be, okay, but for Terraform, we need a service account. Fine, we can create the service account. Okay, but in GCP, to create a service account, we need a project. And okay, that's fine, we create the project. But immediately after someone says, but Google says that the best practice is to keep the project under a folder, not under the organization. So we also need a folder. So you start to have a bunch of resources that are required to move on. And uh, someone would probably at this point say, okay, let's create an application that creates all these resources. And you're leaving that meeting with a backlog of two weeks that is probably unnecessary because you're going to invest lots of energies trying to solve a problem that is not really a problem and trying to over-engineer a suboptimal solution. So how I like to do this? I like to start from principle first and then define the desired architecture. What do I mean with principle first? So it's okay to define the principles and try to stick as much as possible. But it, since we are in this initial phase, we don't need to be super strict and we can try to mitigate the risk gradually. So I prefer to start from least privileged principles, use infrastructure as code as much as possible and prefer cattle to pets. The other thing is the desired architecture. So the desired architecture is essentially clearly stating what is going to be the final state, the goal of your operational environment. So how you want to operate at the end of this bootstrapping process. So these are two important things because one is giving you a guideline to try to fall as much as possible until you go to the final stage. And then you also define the final stage. So everyone in the team knows in which direction they are going. So how to do this? I like to divide this process in three phases and I call them inception phase, pre-operational phase and operational phase. You can see them a bit like the protection rings in an operating system where you have the ring zero, which is the, the one with the highest privileges. And then you, gradually you move out in the external rings and you have less and less privileges. So in this way, what you do, you try to mitigate the risks of using highly privileged accounts. So let's see now these phases in more detail one by one. So in the inception phase, what you have I like to say that in this phase, we have uh, we assume that God exists. What do I mean we assume we God exists? So we don't try to solve the chicken and egg problem, but we assume that someone have, has created the chicken or the egg for us. So what we do, we leverage the power of the single account that we have, so the super org admin, and we're going to create the minimum set of, of resources that we need to move to the next phase, which is the pre-operational phase. The goal is to move as, as fast as possible into a phase where we can leverage automation, we can start using lower privileges, uh, lower privileged service accounts. So when we do this, we move to the pre-operational phase. The pre-operational phase now is giving us a bunch of service accounts and we can start creating the resources using infrastructure as code. So in this phase, we don't need to use any account that is assigned to a person, but we can simply operate using a service account. We have a bucket to store our state, but these service accounts are still highly privileged. So what we need to do, we need to move to the operational phase. 
the outcome of the pre-operation phase is exactly that. So is our goal is to create all our environments and in each environment the, end, the identities that we want to use to operate that environment. So once we create all these, we are moving to the operational phase. This operational phase now allows us to create the resources and follow the policies and the best practices and all the principles that we defined at the beginning and that are defined in our organization. So now, finally, we moved from an uncomfortable situation where we were using service accounts that were highly privileged to a more secure situation where we have our operational state, which is our desired architecture, and we also have identities that can only operate in their own environment. But we still have those service accounts, so what is left to do? We can do a couple of things just to uh, improve the security of the system and the reliability. So what we can do, we can deactivate the service account that I used, that we used in the pre-operational phase. And we can also try to find a way to regularly exercise whatever we have done in the pre-operational phase. So we can use another service account, for example, to exercise the creation of environments, or we can exercise the entire pre-operational phase. If we use infrastructure as code, it should not affect our infrastructure. And we can do this on a regular basis. Why we need this? We need this to exercise our ability to recover in case of disaster that can happen because human error or something happens to our cloud providers, the region is down or something else. So this is how I do it. Let me know what you think. And uh, especially if you have suggestions, please use the comment down below so I can, uh, I can read them and we can have a conversation on, uh, on this topic. Thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next one. Bye bye.